This is the Build with Tech podcast, where we dive into the minds of business leaders, building tech-enabled businesses to launch and scale profitable enterprises. With your host, Ray Ortega. Welcome to the Build with Tech podcast, where we explore how companies are leveraging technology to grow and scale their business. I'm your host, Ray Ortega. And I want to say thank you for joining our podcast. Uh, if you've heard of our previous podcast, Learn to Build a Business, this is kind of the offshoot to that, where we're talking more about technology and business together. I have a great guest today um, who is the founder of Sarasota Sports Medicine, Dr. Ken Kaufman. Uh, Ken, how are you doing? Uh, good, Ray. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It was actually great talking to you last time. Uh, we were talking about your business and the different types of technologies that you're using Um and so before we get started on all of that details, let's talk a little bit about who you are and your background and how you got to where you got to. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm uh, trained as a chiropractor. I uh, went to Life Chiropractic College in uh, Marietta, Georgia, and uh, that was 30 years ago, and uh, 31 years ago, actually. And uh, yeah, started off as kind of your traditional chiropractor, taking care of patients with bad backs and necks and um, about halfway through my career, I uh, was able to, I had the fortunate ability to be the team chiropractor for the Baltimore Orioles during their spring training. Uh, their spring training facility is down here in Sarasota, Florida. And so, uh, yeah, I was able to take care of those athletes and, uh, you know, be, you know, as time went by and I was able to see what was going on inside the training room, uh, the way the athletes were treated. Um, I decided and made the slow transition to shift into more of a sports medicine focused clinic. And so since that time, we've been able to morph everything into a way where, you know, our, our, our patients are treated just like professional athletes. So we get them uh, seen right away within, you know, 24 hours, uh, usually same day. Um, we get them assessed right away. If they need any diagnostic imaging, we can oftentimes facilitate uh, x-rays and MRIs same day, uh, we get them treated right away and, uh, we kind of can take them through a whole process. If it's somebody that we can help, we can take them through a whole process where they don't have to ever leave our clinic or any other services that we do everything all under one roof. And basically it's uh, morphed into our, our tagline of, you don't have to be a pro to be treated like one. And, uh, so, you know, we take care of, you know, more than just back. So it's, rotator cuff uh, injuries, uh, uh, you know, knee meniscus tears. Then we take care of a ton of different athletes, active adults, high school and collegiate uh, athletes. And uh, so it's a lot of fun and we, we can, we help people avoid surgery and help them realize their goals. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, when we were talking about, it, I know you had mentioned, you know, sports, obviously that was the, the catalyst for how you got started. Was sports uh, an interest or a hobby of yours in the past? Is that something that you kind of just like morphed into because of, of the work that you do? No, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, in my mid to late fifties and uh, still active and, and love to participate in sports. I, uh, you know, started water skiing when I was about seven, actually about five years old and uh, became a nationally ranked competitive water skier when I lived in Michigan and uh you know played baseball in high school and uh different sports and then when i moved down to florida um you know got into you know running and doing triathlons i've done up to a half ironman nice. distance triathlon uh, a couple marathons and you know currently play golf and tennis and you know i'm just always active and i love taking care of uh i love taking care of athletes and active adults because they're highly motivated and uh you know, we'll follow my recommendations and, uh, you know, they really want to get better. So they'll, they'll put the effort in and, and spend the time doing it. So that's how I, how I initially got into it. Well, and that's good. I mean, and, and you know, as you know, if you're an athlete, it, you know, you want to get treated by someone who is an athlete because they understand yeah, right. everything that you're going through. So, um, so that's, yeah. that's awesome that, that you're like that when you, when you started your business or when you were, you know, transitioning, cause you were a doctor first and then you went into business for yourself. Am I right? No, I went right from, was an athlete to begin with, and then uh, became, uh, uh, you know, graduated from uh, school and, uh, you know, kind of gradually kind of transformed everything into the more of the sports medicine. Okay. And, um, and you went straight, but, but when you, but you went into your own practice or did you have to practice? Oh yeah, first? yeah. No, no, I, I, uh, I did an internship. Uh, I had to do my internship, which was just part of my licensing requirements. Uh, but I opened my clinic uh, right, you know, right in the very beginning. So, 
Oh, okay, awesome. So what kind of challenges do you would you say you ran into when you kind of started morphing into into having your own practice? Well, um, well, certainly as a new graduate, uh, you don't know what you don't know, and you think you know a lot uh, coming out of school. Um, you know, within the first couple of years, you realize how much you didn't know, especially about running a business and all the different aspects and all the different hats you have to wear. Uh, cause when you're at school, you're like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be a doctor. That's what I'm going to do. But yeah. when you, uh, open your own practice, now you have, you have to hire staff, you have to keep them motivated, you have to pay them, you have to, you know, market, uh, uh, you have to, you know, do the books, you have to deal with all kinds of regulatory things. So. There's so much more that uh, most people don't realize when they open their own business. And I don't care if you're, you know, adjusting spines or, uh, or, or selling widgets. There's a, there's a lot, lot to it. So it's, uh, um, you know, it, 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 and, and the other big thing is that it takes twice as much money and takes twice as long to get anything, anything accomplished. So, yeah. Well, it's funny cause it's, there's that saying that, you know, people who are kind of entrepreneurs, they're willing to work uh, 80 hours a week, uh, you know, for themselves rather than work for 40 hours a week for somebody else. When you uh, when you started your practice, now you said you worked with the, the Baltimore Orioles. Now, is that something that just kind of happened over time or did you have connections uh, to be able to get those kind of clients uh, when you when you started your practice? Yeah, that's the number one question with new graduates that uh, want to work with sports teams is how did, how did you get in there? And yeah. really, really, it's just being prepared and just having a big network of, uh, of people. So I, uh, I got that. I, I got an anonymous email from their medical coordinator uh, one day saying that they were moving their, their spring training operations to Sarasota and they were looking for a chiropractor to be able to take care of the athletes during spring training. Would I be interested? And of course, you know, the, the answer was, hell yeah, I would. And, uh, but really the way, how I even got positioned to do it was my, uh, my daughter, uh, was in gymnastics with, uh, a young girl and, and, you know, in school and her dad was one of the team orthopedists for the Orioles. And so that it was just a network of who I knew. Um, I, you know, and I, I always tell my, I've always told my kids that, uh, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, but what, you know, keeps you in the door. Um, yep. so it, it, that's really what it was. It was just in the right place at the right time. And I took advantage of the opportunity when it came across. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, it is, it is who, you know, uh, but then once you get in, you have to kind of prove yourself at that yeah, point. You, gotta, you can't, you you can't just go in not knowing what you're doing. Exactly. So, so, so definitely understand that. And so, um, so can you share, uh, you know, a success story that you had in your business uh, it, where like may, you know, a major role of it was, you know, the technological advances. I know we talked on the phone about some of the technological advances you guys are doing and, and mm -hmm. how you're using technology to leverage, uh, you know, to get a bigger business. And not only that, the technology in the medical side too, was pretty exciting. And we were talking as well. Um, could you tell yeah. us a little bit more about like how that all works and, and how that plays a pivotal role in your business? Yeah. I mean, uh, we use technology in our marketing. Uh, we uh, uh, used actually we we uh, began to use and actually it was uh, uh, my, I'm hiring a new associate in August, and he was able to you know teach an old dog new tricks and use utilizing Chat GPT to be able mm -hmm. to format soap notes. And yep. if you're familiar with medicine and, and medical care, you have to document everything. And it's my least favorite thing to do. I hate doing it, but it's something I can't delegate because it has to come from me. And so uh, by utilizing chat GPT, uh, we can, uh, I can literally, you know, take and ramble on verbally uh, into a microphone, uh, my, you know, my, my findings and in, in what I normally would do. And then chat GPT can format it into a, a into a regular document with uh, SOAP stands for subjective, objective assessment and plan. And it'll automatically format it for me. So all I do, all I have to do is cut and paste and I can do a SOAP note inside of a a few minutes rather than taking and typing it out for a half an hour. So it's a big time saver. So, yeah. And you know, what's amazing about that. Uh, so, so, uh, you know, our company, Grata software is our parent company and we build technology. And f about five years ago, we were approached by doctors about doing something very similar because we were already doing AI stuff about five years ago. And the problem was that none of the engines could, could speak doctors, you know, doctor speak or right. medical speak. Like it didn't, it could not understand uh, the phonetics when you would speak into it. So I find that amazing how now ChatGPT does a phenomenal job at understanding the phonetics of medical terms 
and yeah, can actually exactly. uh, do that. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so how would you say, um, so you said marketing, what other areas of the company do you think is, uh, has been benefited from using technology as well? Well, I mean, uh, uh, certainly, you know, uh, website SEO, but that's, that's, you know, everybody has, has that, uh, and they, they work towards that. One of the things that I'm uh, currently looking into is upgrading our, uh, software for our office management software from a server-based system into a cloud-based system. And that cloud-based system has a lot more, uh, capabilities for being able to communicate with the existing patients and new patients. Um, the current system we have, we have to have, you know, our, 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 uh, server-based system, but then we have, um, uh, weave for our phones and the technology to be able to, uh, text message patients, text message them, uh, a link to our, our Google review page, for example, um, you know, and, and be able to use that as a communication device because, you know, certainly when I first got into practice, it was, you know, phone calls, that was it, phone calls and yellow pages and going out and, you know, knocking on doors if you needed to, um, now, uh, you have to go where you have to go where the customers are and the, the prospective patients are. So we rely uh, heavily, uh, uh, not as far as outside marketing, we rely heavily on Google ads, um, and leveraging, you know, leveraging that technology and then understanding, um, uh, how to utilize Google ads, uh, effectively. And I, I discovered something uh, probably about 10 or 15 years ago that, um, especially, you know, newer doctors, newer doctors get out and there's so many, there's no shortage of, uh, uh, medical supply companies want to wanting to sell you their latest device, be it a laser treatment or shockwave therapy or, or whatever. Um, and you can get lost in the weeds trying to add so many modalities that you know, you can go bankrupt just, you know, trying to, trying to buy the next modality. And you always think that that modality is going to be the, the holy grail to bring, bring in new patients and new business. And it really is not the case because patients don't really care, you know, what you're going to do to get them better. They just want to get better. And so, uh, by utilizing, uh, you know, uh, util utilizing Google ads as far as, um, you know, speaking to them. You know, so we don't, we don't advertise laser therapy. We advertise non-surgical relief for rotator cuff tears. That's and cause that's what people are actually searching for. And so, um, so, you know, doing that. And then I, I realized a few weeks ago that our ads are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we are exploring an AI company that can take an automate some of the initial contact that we have with, uh, with prospective patients. So, um, currently, you know, my, we're not open on the weekends. We're not open at night. And so when, uh, it's not uncommon on a weekend that we have seven, eight, 10 inquiries from our website, uh, to our front desk. And in order to process that, my front de a human being has to respond to that. They have to create an account. They have to send a message, um, and, uh, uh to be able to, you know, make that first contact. Uh, with this AI, what we can do is we can automate that whole system to where somebody reaches out by email, text, they click on an ad or what have you, and the uh, uh, AI automatically can send them a text message back and help create them a, uh, create an account and schedule an appointment for them right right there in real time. So we're really I'm really excited about that technology because you know weekend warriors they're out <laughs> playing softball or they're playing pickleball. They hurt themselves. What are they going to do? They're going to go and they're going to search. How do I overcome, you know, this knee pain? And our website comes up and when you want to be able to, uh, capitalize on that, uh, um, you know, when they're, when they're engaged and not wait until, you know, they're taking their kids to school and starting their work week. So, yeah, that's, uh, those are all amazing uses of the technology, by the way. And, and it's a great idea that, you know, having a chat bot. Um, that's able to answer those kind of inquiries and stuff like that. And then also have that automated ability to automatically schedule, or you can even have it notify doctors, you know, your, your associates or whatever the case may be. So um, that's, it's amazing use of the technology. So that's really awesome. Um, you seem to be very forward thinking when it comes to technology. Are you, do you consider yourself a technical person? Um, well, I've been involved in the development of two mobile apps. I write my own uh, or I do my own website. Uh, work on my own SEO. Um, 
so and that's uh, that's just been you know kind of like I I know enough just to break up break stuff. So every once in a while I have to have to call somebody and say, hey, can you fix this or or you know get on tech support to try to solve something. But uh, uh, you know my wife calls me the techie because if there's any any kind of issue with the 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 mobile apps or uh, websites, I'm I'm the one that they call first, I guess. Not I'm not that last the last one, but I, I know just enough to be able to, I'm not afraid of it, I guess is the good thing is I'll, I'll just kind of jump in and try to figure it out. And if I can't figure it out, then I can make a phone call and find a resource. What, what do you attest that to? Is that just the, your upbringing or is that something you kind of like over time, just established technology is just something that was something that you could do? Uh, yeah, just kind of, uh, over time. Over time, uh, yeah, again, not being afraid of it and diving in and going, okay, I, you know, I knew I, I was able to, uh, uh, what, what was it back in the day I could take and, uh, you know, kind of look at the code of certain things and be able to figure out how to how to adjust, uh, uh, you know, it was just like, you know, just trying to uh, go in and, and just try to figure it out and, and uh, over time been able to develop just enough to get by and but certainly not the, not an expert, I mean. Yeah, but I mean, for me though, to have a doctor that's very tech savvy, I think is a really good thing uh, because you're you're always forward thinking, right? And I think, you know, like I have a doctor who I've had for years, and he's an older gentleman, but he's definitely not into tech at all. So he he doesn't never once do I get the uh, feeling that he's finding the next latest greatest thing that could help, you know, in the health field, right? And so sometimes I just feel like, okay, well old school ways of doing things. Yes, they still kind of work, but you know, there's new advances in technology that can actually yeah. make things better for you. Um, yeah, and it's, so it's it, really good to have someone. It, yeah. And, and like, again, I don't care if you're, you know, selling, you know, chiropractic adjustments or you're selling widgets or what you're selling. If you're not embracing technology to, you know, make you leaner, uh, more profitable, uh, you know, increase your marketing presence, uh, your online presence, if you're not utilizing those tools, you're just going to be left in the dust and it's changing so fast. The advent of AI is really exciting. I think it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, this company that we're, we're speaking with, you know, the, the gone of the days, well, soon to be are gone of the days where you have to hire a, a you know, a Philippine uh, a call center to be able to answer phone calls and it's all going to be run on AI and the, the voice recognition and the voice is going to be, you know, it's going to have inflections, ums, uhs, and, you know, everything to that you'll never know that you're not speaking to a human being when you're, you're calling a business. And, uh, you know, th and that it's, it's it, it, a way it's cost savings and, uh, you know, to be able to find an employee that can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week and, and, you know, you know, not, not answer the phone, um, is, uh, you know, really important. And, and, and it, you know, it's it, it, it's hard enough to uh, get a get a new customer, uh, and you know you don't want to lose it just because you know somebody's not answering the phone or uh, able to respond. So, yeah, absolutely. So, on, uh, let me ask you this on a, on a more personal note: um, What would you consider? Um, do you watch movies much? Oh yeah, you I'm watch movies. Movie buff. What would you consider yeah. the type? Uh, uh, what is one of your best movies that you you've ever seen out there? Uh, best movies. Oh man, my wife and I both like love just underdog movies. So like Rudy, I don't I don't care how many times I watch that movie. When he runs out on that field, I get misty every time. I probably watch that movie twenty times, and I still get misty at, at that. Um, but we also uh, really enjoy uh, uh, documentaries, uh, uh, you know, and 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 stories that are uh, based on real life, uh, you know, real life stories. So. Uh, you know, we, you know, we enjoy that, uh, that aspect of it. And then again, just something that has a good story because everybody's making movies where, you know, somebody's, somebody's kidnapped and, and some guy has to come and save the day. So, yeah, I've, uh, I, the, all those revenge movies out there where someone like, I, I just watched one the other day. It's a brand new movie where someone gets injured or no, someone gets hurt and the guy goes out and basically just goes and kills everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's like, <laughs> that's like you know, the popular she, movie, right? Ben, yeah, been there, done that. So <laughs> I think it's called the Beekeeper. That's the one. That's the one I the just Beekeeper. Saw. Yeah, with Jason yeah, Statham. Yeah, yes, I'll the Beekeeper. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll watch yeah, those yeah. movies, and yeah, because they're entertaining and fun. But you know, yeah. uh, we like to uh, walk away. You know, when we're done with a movie, and go, "That was a good story. I like that story." 
You know? Yeah. So. There's a new one called Sight. I don't know if you've seen Sight. that one. And it is it is S I G H T. Yeah. It's about it's about a a doctor in the past. I I can't remember the exact plot, but it's basically about the first uh, studies, the first tests on replenishing someone's vision after they lost their vision, like at, oh, like wow. they lost okay. their sight. That's why it's yeah, called sight. Yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, it's actually it's in, it's in okay. theaters. I don't think it has much traction, unfortunately. But I saw the previews uh, and it looks pretty inspiring. Um, oh, cool. And it's about that. It's about basically the the per, I guess is the person who first started the you know that whole movement of trying to leverage uh, tech to get sight back. You know, oh, into wow. into a human being, but um, yeah, cool. But yeah, it, so so let's get back to your business. Uh, so where do you guys see? Where do you see yourself in the next five years in your business right now? Well, I'm in the very early stages of uh, franchising our concept of uh, patient care and and our business. Um, you know, we I, I think it's a franchisable model based on other uh, healthcare franchises that are out there. Um, and you know, we, we, we do take a unique approach, uh, of uh, patient centered care. And so, uh, that's really where I see, see us going. I already have, I already have, uh, you know, a list of different physicians and doctors that are interested in, uh, uh, you know, maybe becoming franchisees. Um, and, you know, given my experience over the last 30 years and doing, doing this, uh, you know, I think we could, we I could leverage, you know, my influence of uh, uh, patient care to a, you know, much greater audience around the country, uh, but then also help, you know, uh, you know, numerous doctors be able to uh, be successful and, uh, you know, coach them in, into our process and have them avoid the pitfalls and the, you know, cost twice as much, take quite twice as long as you think uh, to be able to uh, really be successful and, you know, take care of their families and, and just take care of their community. Are you going through like a franchise, like, consultant expert or something like that or are you kind of just yeah i have i have a couple of advisors uh one advisor in particular is uh he's the money guy and and you know does deals so um he's helping me uh you know kind of organize things because when you're when you're in business by yourself uh uh and you know the buck stops with you and you're the one that makes all the decisions uh things can get a little little loose as far as uh you know organization and uh um, you know, he's, he's the guy, you know, Hey, put everything in the numbers so that, you know, all your numbers, you know, your percentages and, and so forth. So, uh, if somebody asks you, you know, what's your profitability, what's your profit margin, you know, what are your staff costs? You have those percentages and numbers down pat so that, um, you know, you know that you can duplicate what you're doing. And, uh, you know, so far that's, that's been good, but yeah, we're going to go through a, uh, a franchise consulting company to take us through all the, the legal issues and, and uh, attorneys and trademarks and things of that nature. And then also uh, also be able to sell it and, uh, you know, have uh, a network of uh, brokers out there, uh, you know, being able to bring leads to it. And I know that, you know, franchising, it's very systematized. You have to have a, a, basically a system within your organization. Um, yep. How do you feel like you guys fit in that? Do you, Are you fully systematized or you're still working out some system related things? Well, I think, I think, I think you're always working on systems and working to perfect things to, you know, make things, uh, um, you know, uh, more streamlined. Um, and I can certainly, I'm certainly going to leverage technology to be able to, uh, uh, provide, uh, uh, coaching for our, our franchisees and our, our, uh, you know, law office staff. We want to make sure that we, you know, do some virtual trainings, uh, virtual video, uh, interactive videos to be able to, uh, you know, provide training platforms for, um, our franchisees to be able to, you know, seamlessly get information. Um, we used a, uh, uh, it was a company out of Vegas called uh, Lightspeed VT. Um, and that was a, you know, previous company that I was working with. And uh, actually one of the previous apps I was uh, doing, it was it's called Sports Met On Demand. And it was a, uh, a platform that was a mobile app based that we were uh, going to employ, um, which uh, I'll, you know, all the, all the little businesses and things that you come up with as an entrepreneur and that don't pan out doesn't mean it was a failure. You, you, you may be able to bring it back in and utilize that technology uh, at a later date. And that's, uh, that's where I see, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Lightspeed VT coming in because it's a fully immersed uh, interactive video platform where um, based on, you know, somebody's responses of questions, uh, it'll direct them into 
uh, where they need to go inside, right inside the video seamlessly. So once we can, you know, get that established, that'll be great technology that we can utilize to train, uh, uh, you know, train new staff coming on after a franchisee is already bought for a few years, because that'll be always be an issue of uh, constant staff turnover, uh, you know, throughout the throughout the state uh, throughout the country. That's a good point, by the way. Uh, what you just said a second ago about sometimes, if, even if the technology seems like it's a failure, it's really not a failure because you could use that stuff for other things. Um, we've actually ran into that several times. We've um, again, we're a consulting company, so people hire us to build their tech and kind of they come up with some of the ideas and then we come up with other ideas and we work with them on it. And there's some projects that people have just abandoned. And the funny thing is that technology that, that we were building, it's completely useful for like 10 other industries. And yeah, so, right, right, right. Yeah. So it's really funny. Like right now, uh, we're in the middle of a government bid for uh, a jury management software. And the funny thing is, is a software that we built for FEMA which is a claims management software, all of the functionalities very are very similar to the functionality that the jury management software wants. You know what I mean? So um, so there's always ways to kind of take it and kind of mold it to the next thing. Yeah, just um, take and tweak so. it, repurpose it, and bam, there you go. I, Absolutely. I learned that. Uh, I, 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 I attempted to, uh, and this is another idea that I have that's sitting on the back shelf of my brain, uh, collecting dust at the moment, but it's a, uh, a medical device, therapy, a therapy device, and... Uh, um, I learned a long time ago when I was kind of researching what to do is you can take one well-known product, another well-known product, put it together, bam, new product. And uh, that's yeah, that's what you're saying from a technological standpoint, but certainly from a, even a medical device or a therapeutic device standpoint, you can do the same thing. Just take a couple, a couple of things, put it together and say, hey, that'll work. So, yes. Most, most private equity work that way. By the way, yeah, yeah. So we've yeah. we've been involved in five acquisitions, uh, and in those acquisitions, it's always they already have several platforms, and then they see one of our clients' platforms, and like we just yeah. want to acquire you to take this platform and attach it to this other platform and make sure, a whole another absolutely. product out of it. So it happens. Yeah, it happens all the time. We see it. Question: How do you stay ahead of uh, the technology? Because I mean, you're spe- you sound. I mean, like I said, it, and I think I said this when we were talking is, you know, most of the people that we talk to um, are are using technology and incorporating technology more from a business standpoint. Like they're just on top of the business. They're ne- not necessarily working in the business. They're just innovating ideas. And then they send someone out to go do it. Right. Yeah. But you yeah, yeah. have your hands in it. Um, yeah. So how do you stay on top of that? How do you stay on top of the technology uh-huh. being, being a doctor and staying on top of your responsibilities as a doctor, but also staying on top of the technology. Uh, out of necessity, I guess, and not sleeping it, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I get, you know, well, think about what I do for a living is, is, you know, somebody comes in with some problem and I have to go through an assessment process, question them, find out, maybe order some testing, try to get some more pieces of the puzzle and then solve a puzzle for them. And so, um, I guess that's just my makeup. My personality is, okay, here's a problem. Here's an issue. How can we make this better? How can we, you know, uh, uh, how can we streamline this? How can we find the solution to this particular issue? So, you know, exactly. So I'll go back to the whole idea that, you know, one day I'm standing at our, our farmer's market. My wife is, you know, at one of the booths and I'm feel that I'm looking at an email that we came in, came into the office on my phone from somebody having a question about, you know, Hey, can you help with X, Y, Z? And I'm like, okay, there's gotta be something that we can do to be able to automate this. So we're, you know, we can capture that. And that's what kind of led me into over a few day period of, you know, reaching out, trying to find the right people, you know, switching our system over to a cloud-based system so that we can use uh, web integrations and web hooks to be able to, you know, be able to have that communication go seamlessly. So it's really, yeah, you know, I, I'm just, a, I guess, I guess I'm a problem solver. So I'm, I'm, it's just part of my makeup. I'm constantly looking at that. So it's amazing just hearing you uh, talk because like, you know, terms like web hooks, you don't talk like that unless mm-hmm. you're a tech guy, you know, web, yeah. no, <laughs> exactly. the average person does not even know what a web hook is. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So and, and just to iterate for anyone who's listening, uh, you know, for the people that are listening that are, if you're more on the business side that you're hearing this technology conversation, the, what web hooks essentially are is the ability for us to trigger, basically just send out to a URL information and we can send as much information as we want or as little as information you want. And then you use that, uh, endpoint. It's called an endpoint. You can use that to gather that information and then apply whatever it is you want to apply to it. Um, and it's uh, we use it all the time for, like for instance, where we have and, and I'll talk a little bit about our marketing uh, platform that 
or our marketing that we do that we use webhooks. So, you know, we have a lead generation tool and that lead generation tool gathers people's information, but we also have to send them into a sequence for automated emails. So we yeah. use a webhook and send the data over to the other system, gather the information, and then now use it for the automated uh, emailing system. So, so that's kind of how webhooks work. It allows you to attach two different systems together uh, and pass data across those two different systems. So, um, and that's just awesome that you can have that conversation because that's very unique. I'll tell you that right now. Like, I don't think, I don't know of a single doctor that has that kind of conversation. Yeah, so, well, uh, you know, help being involved in the development of two mobile apps, uh, actually three technically. So yeah. uh, we're currently, you know, building building one right now. My uh, wife is the lead on it uh, called Local Relief. It's a free app on the, on the uh, uh, app stores right now. I know that's kind of off topic, but um, it, it, yeah, imagine, imagine a, uh, uh, dynamic social platform, uh, dedicated completely to helping people, uh, support people before, during, and after natural disasters. So hurricanes come in, you just moved to Florida from Ohio. You don't know what to do if there's a hurricane, um, and mo uh, local relief has all the resources that you would need to be able to. Um, you know, be able to connect, connect with the right people, have the right resources and so forth. And then, that's, of course, after the storm, uh, what resources are out there? How can I rebuild? How can I, you know, you know, get water? How can I find sandbags? How can I find somebody to tarp my roof? And then a social uh, platform where people can, uh, uh, citizens can help each other. So, um, yeah, that's technology that that's we're, awesome, we're working for right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. And that's, and you're just doing that just, uh, to provide that service, is, is that just free, or is that something that eventually will turn into a, a service? It's it's, it's paid actually uh, local relief is a nonprofit. My wife okay. established it as a nonprofit. She's the founder and executive director. Um, nice. And in fact, she is in Dallas or Fort Worth, Texas, right now at a, a Texas uh, 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 emergency management conference. Um, she's very involved in Florida because we're here. Uh, she has an agreement with the state of Florida to uh, utilize local relief. Uh, during this upcoming season, um, just, and and the way she'll monetize it is through uh, uh, corporate sponsors and, and corporate supporters and, and government grants and so forth. So, that's awesome. That's I mean that's a good um, that's, that's a good a use whole of other podcast, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's a good use of technology. I mean, and at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, because really, um, you know, we were just having this discussion just a few weeks ago about AI, right? And and one of the biggest issues that we're having with AI right now is everyone's trying to figure out how to use it to make a lot of money. And we're and we're trying to figure out like and and they're also using it to kind of remove humanity from the chain, right? Yeah. Um and we've been having this discussion internally and also with some cohorts in the industry and uh and the thing is like our organization, at least my organization Grata Software, we focus on using AI to move business forward, right? It's more of like as a tool to assist in helping you grow, scale, and get better as a company, not to replace humans. That's that's right. that's one of the biggest, I guess, stamps that we put on that. We just don't, we're not in, in it to replace humans. And, you know, what I like is that you're using technology for a nonprofit to help expand what the nonprofit can provide yeah. to people. Yeah, and that, to connect that's humans. awesome. Yeah, That yeah. is awesome. So it's a movement that a lot of us are trying to follow, you know. Um, yeah, absolutely. To, you know, to because, yeah, I love technology, but I don't, I don't appreciate technology taking over people's uh, jobs and livelihood. You yeah, know, right. Just, exactly. You know, yeah. um, how has your approach to uh, technology affected your business over time? Like, I know you talked about all the things that you guys are doing, but like, how have you seen the changes recently that has been going on, and how is it affecting your? Uh, your business and your investment in technology. You mentioned ChatGPT, right? And so ChatGPT yeah. has been a big help, and that's recent. That's only like a year and a mm -hmm. half old, two years old almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I've, I've just only recently begun us utilizing. I use ChatGPT to help uh, write uh, content on my website. Um, you know, because and because I can I can take and and you know I can speak to somebody verbally, a patient, because I've done it for so long. I can explain to them exactly how stem cell uh, stem cells work in regenerative medicine. I can explain that, uh, but for me to write it is, you know, I have to think about it. And you know, one it, it, from here down to the down to my fingers, forget it. It's lost. I don't have that skill set. Uh, but to be able to uh, you know, use ChatGPT to be able to put something that I say verbally um, in a for you know a, a short few sentences and be able to expand on it to be able to 
uh, be able to use references and be able to capture uh, uh, citations and things of that nature uh, for uh, the pages that you're writing are, are invaluable. Um, uh, so um, I think that's that's a critical thing that you know a lot of people have missed is you know, being able because you can take and write a you uh, have Chat GPT create a web page for you. Make sure that you tell it to you utilize uh, 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 high SEO. And uh, it'll it'll take and it'll create it for you and, and you know put in there because you know we're in Sarasota, Florida, and how do you how do you interject uh, search searchable pages if somebody searches for stem cell therapy in Sarasota, Florida, um, without making it sound corny on the page? And so uh, ChatGPT can take and like inter interlace Sarasota, Florida in throughout the document to be able to make it high, high uh, uh, search value. So, yeah. Do you see um, do you see any technologies that are coming in the forefront? It doesn't have to be like AI and something, but just like anything, maybe uh, medical tech that you see that is going to be a huge thing for you guys in the future coming up. Well, I think we're at the we're on the leading edge of the wave. I think of regenerative medicine. Uh, the technology that's coming out in uh, uh, regenerative medicine is is really really exciting. Uh, so things like I already mentioned st uh, stem cell therapy, um, the uh, you know kind of the older older technology of stem cell therapy with harvesting stem cells from someone's own body, which on the surface sounds sounds really good, but when you consider that um, you know, as we age, our stem cells get less and less active and they, they become more and more inactive. Um, and that's just part of the aging process. It's estimated that, you know, when we're, when we're born, we're born with, you know, a set amount of stem cells. And by the time we even reach puberty, 90% of them are now inactive. So by the time somebody is in their forties, fifties, uh, they have just a fraction of their stem cells are even active where we utilize stem cells derived from, um, healthy, donated, carefully screened umbilical cords. Um, those are all highly active. They're all functioning. They're brand new. And uh, when we, you know, we can utilize that and, uh, uh, you know, really bring about a, a great healing of uh, arthritic changes, you know, rotator cuff tears and uh, meniscal tears and so forth. Uh, but then they also, the technology of peptide therapy, which is a little bit of con controversy in there because peptides will, it's not a drug. It's not a supplement. It's kind of in this gray area. So the FDA is, uh, you know, constantly trying to tweak and trying to figure out how to how this is going to affect things. But uh, peptides are, uh, a, you know, very exciting advancement in uh, regenerative medicine to help patients recover and become healthier. So let me go back to your business real quick and just, um, uh, you know, because you talked about the technology, you talked about the business itself. Uh, is there any advice you would give to someone that's going into business for themselves? Um, you know, when they're starting out, is there any advice you'd like to give anybody out there? Uh, make sure you're capitalized. Uh, you know, again, it's going to cost twice as much. It's going to take twice as long. Um, you know, l learn from people in the field, you know, go and go and, you know, if, if it's a new doctor or, um, you know, somebody new in technology, if it's, uh, uh, you know, working computers or whatever it is, um, go to, go to people and hang out with people that have already done it. And, uh, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins and, uh, yeah. the idea of modeling is huge. Uh, and so, uh, you know, going and, and, you know, immersing yourself in, uh, you know, it, I have students and young doctors, uh, asking me all the time if they can come shadow. I love it because I get to share some of my experience and knowledge. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful kind of that they'll be able to take that knowledge from me and be able to, uh, capitalize on it and, you know, shorten the learning curve, shorten the expense curve. Um, but really, really, you know, serving, serving people. Uh, it, it, if you serve people, the money is going to come. Uh, and that needs to be the emphasis. If you're, if you go into it trying to make money uh, at all costs, it, it, it's not going to, not a sustainable uh, uh, business model. Uh, you have to go in there with the idea of just taking care of people and doing the right things for the right reasons. And, um, you know, the, the money will come and the business will be successful. That's one of the best parts right there, man. I'm telling you the, the do it, don't do it for the money. Um, yeah. we've had, I, I can tell you right now in the tech world, um, right now there's a huge amount of layoffs happening in the tech world. And a lot of the people that are losing their jobs are people that went in for the money. Yeah. Um, 
they were there for the job. They weren't necessarily there because they really cared about what they were doing and how they were uh, delivering value to people. And so, um, so if there's anything I can just, uh, you know, echo is that don't do it for the money, um, do it for the passion of it. Um, yeah. cause it's, you know, and, and helping other people, um, that's yeah, super absolutely. important. Um, yep. uh, so yeah, Dr. Kaufman, um, what, uh, go ahead and, and, you know, let us know where we can find you and what, what people can get from your, uh, you know, from your services. Yeah, so uh, we can be found at online, sarasotasportsmed.com, and it's sportsmed.com. Um, my personal uh, email address is Dr. Ken at sarasotasportsmed.com. And uh, again, we you know we provide everything from chiropractic care to acupuncture to regenerative medicine, corrective exercise therapy. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll you'll be able to see the different services. Um, and as we uh, develop our franchise model, uh, you know, that will, you know, obviously be on, uh, you know, on the website, we'll, we'll add those links on there. Um, we're looking to do that in the next six months or so, uh, uh, go through the development process. Um, and, you know, it's not unusual for folks that are uh, from Canada and out, out, of, out of the state of Florida, if they're injured, they can come down here and they can get treated and, uh, you know, especially in the wintertime, don't, don't spend the winter up in Ohio or Michigan where I'm from. And, uh, you know, you know, in the cold weather and freezing, sweetie snow, come down to sunny Florida. You can get treated for, uh, uh, while you're down here and enjoy sunny Sarasota. Yeah. And you're talking about anybody, right? It doesn't have to be a sports related, uh, injury. No, it, right? doesn't, it, could... it doesn't, you know, we're, we're sports medicine and, uh, uh, you know, I learned long, long ago is, if you uh, and this is a this, this is a, well here's here just a little sidebar here I guess is there's a common uh, a thing that when you are new in business you can help everybody you know when you market that you can help everybody and that you're gonna have, you you can do this and you can do that um, the problem is you're not speaking to anybody if you're if you can do everything and so uh, you know from a marketing standpoint I learned long ago that you know we help people with shoulder pain and that was uh, that was the all we focused on. And you know, you think, oh well, I'm limiting my market. Actually, no, you're not. You're speaking to your 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 market. And invariably, that person that has shoulder pain, and you help them, they're going to say, hey, does this work for knee pain? Because my wife has knee pain, and so pretty much, then you got to, you know, so your business will expand that way by you know making sure you're kind of niching yourself into something that you enjoy. But we take care of you know you know our 85 year old ladies and helping them prevent surgery you know, uh, is is invaluable to them as much as it is to the, you know, 30 year old that has a meniscus tear. <laughs> so that's awesome, man. And, um, I, you know, I was going to ask you your final thoughts, but I, I'll, I'll take that as a final thought. Cause that was actually, yeah, I think so. that was perfect. Yeah. That was a perfect final thought. So, okay, uh, great. Dr. Kaufman, uh, Dr. Ken Kaufman, founder of sport Sarasota sports medicine. Uh, thank you for joining the podcast and I thank you for all of uh, what you just taught the audience, uh, not only about your business, but also the technology behind it. And again, everybody check them out. Um, if you're listening, again, you don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to have a sports-related injury. I almost said industry. Um, injury. <laughs> check them out. And, uh, and yeah, I, good luck to you, Dr. Coffin. I appreciate you getting on. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and for those following, just you know, pay attention to the next podcast. Thanks, Ray. Thanks for having me on. Thank you.